Welcome back to another show on Score Society TV. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, comment, all this good stuff. Um, we got another guest, another professional athlete, someone I had the pleasure of working with before he became a professional athlete. Um, I worked out with him in high school, workaholic, work hard. Um, this is nothing this man wouldn't do in, in a workout, never complained about any running, uh, any any drill. My guy, Peter Martinez. So face the world now. Make the world now. So face the world now. Make the world now. What's up, my guy? What's going on, my guy? How you doing? It's good, brother. Good, brother. Thanks good, for good, coming man. on the show. Um, appreciate man, you talk... having me, man. All love, man. Like I, like I said off, offline, man, it was, it's been a long time, but I had a, you know, I follow you on Instagram and I'm loving your progress. Uh, I love that when we first started out training, your goal was to make it overseas and you're doing it. And you, then you're doing it. You're still an active professional athlete. Um, so congratulations to you. Well, one you, of the man. things I want to talk about to help the youth um, first is talk about, you know, your your journey as far as what high school you went to. Um, talk about give me a challenge that you had in high school that you had to overcome and to, to get to college. I don't even know where to start on that. I mean, I feel like my whole life has been. It's challenging, especially in high school. Um, I mean, starting off with senior year, uh, I mean, my mom, she passed away uh, mm -hmm. middle of, or long, like end of senior year, damn near. So yeah. that was kind of tough. And then junior year, you know, I didn't get no burn. I was right at the bench, but we were one of the top teams in the, in the Bay Area at that time. So, um, but overall, man, I mean, it was, it's been a journey. Let's just put it that way. It's been a journey. Yeah. Can't complain about it. Let's talk about that part right there, because um, there's a lot of kids out there who's going to watch this, and they're probably a junior yeah. in high school, and they feel like, man, I'm not getting the time that I I deserve, the time I'm working for. When you yeah, was going yeah. through that moment, how did you handle it? Did you stop working out? Did you continue to work harder? Did you talk to the coach? Um, let, let us know your steps. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, of course I talked to the coach, I mean, but – Honestly, it's, I mean, it was frustrating, of course, but it never got to me, man. I was always in the gym, wake up, go to the gym, because, like, my, my apartment was right next to 24-hour fitness. I just walked, go uh, go before school, so that's what I would do. My, my morning routine would be go to go to the gym and then go to school. And, um, but, yeah, I never stopped working. Um, it, it, is, it was frustrating, I'll tell you that, but um, I just – I don't know. I got a I got a thick heart, you know. So like, mm -hmm. I never it never got to me, man. I just always stick to the plan, stick to the strip, and you know, just overcame those obstacles, man. Gotcha. Yeah. So did you? Yeah. One of the things I want to know is that when you were a junior, right, and you're still yeah. trying to, you know, you're still trying to crack that 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 spot. Um, yeah. You were still hooping. Were you hooping like AU still? Like, or, or did you did you play any AU teams out there? Yeah, yeah, I definitely play AU. Uh, I play AU my sophomore and junior year. Uh, a team called North Cal Saints. And it was all right. It was a cool experience. Uh, I feel like it could have been better, but um, I feel like just overall high school was just not it. I mean, yeah, it was just not it. Yeah, high school hoops was just not it. I wasn't, I wasn't as good as I. I mean, of course I. As I was right now, but um, I just I, had, I didn't have a shot. It was just all yeah. handled. Wait, I was uh, like, I was just quick. I was just quick. Hey, can I can I cuss on you or no? Yeah, you can cuss as long as uh, yeah, you can cuss. You can cuss. You good? All right, man. I'm just making sure, I'm making sure. But no, I was just quick as fuck. That's it. And uh, you know, I was just a good point guard, good floor general, but I never had that like scoring ability that, that I can, you know, that I could tap into like now, right? Like, versus in high school and stuff. So. That was kind uh, of a challenge. And, uh, listen, yeah, it was, it was a now, now, this is one of the things that's going on right now in basketball. They're talking about how AU is oversaturated, it's not good for the kids. And you're saying right now, hey, man, it was a cool little experience, but high school's not it. And it could have been better. 
What could have been better from an AAU standpoint for a player? Um, I mean, I feel like nowadays it's just different, you know? Uh, like all the social media content and, you know, kids wanting to showboat and do all that stuff. It's just cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I have fun. That's the whole point of the game. But I feel like, like kids nowadays are just distracted by – rankings and mm. uh, social media content and well, who's watching me, who's doing this, who's doing that, what's mm-hmm. he doing? When you should just stay in your lane and just focus on what you got to do, and focus on your grind. Um, but I feel like kids nowadays in general, like way more athletic than oh, they yeah. were back. Like for sure, that's the, but the thing is, they ain't got the, they ain't got this, they ain't got the IQ part of the game. Right. So, they just relying a lot on their athletic ability and all that stuff. Once they get that down, the IQ part, it, like it's wraps, you know. It's wraps. Yeah, I I totally agree. As a as a coach, I see that I see that now. I see kids yeah. they're very skilled. Um, they they very athletic, but yeah, buddy, yeah. they're just out there playing. They're just out there playing. They're, they're not really out there hooping. Yeah, they just hooping. They they not really. Hooping, yeah. They don't have basketball minds. It's it's different between being a hooper and basketball mind. Exactly, um, exactly. And you played a point guard position, so you didn't get mm-hmm. a lot of time your junior year. Um, I, I assume your senior year that changed for you, and you yeah right. Mm-hmm. Then you went to college. What what school did you go to? Uh, so. Like I said, freshman year, I went to JUCO, uh, Santa Monica College. I didn't play. Mm-hmm. I was just working you know, on. I was working out with shoes, getting ready for the next season at uh, Simpson. Uh, so I went to Simpson my sophomore year, and uh, just right what off level, the jump. What level was Simpson? So people know. That's the NAIA. 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 Okay. Yeah, NAIA. So um, I went there. I didn't. I didn't really feel the school because it was a. It was a private Christian school. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were just very strict on everything, man. So yeah. you know, you couldn't, you, you know, you had to curse you. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. So I was like, it's a, I, I, I it took mind. away from your college, your college experience, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> like, nah, this ain't this. So I put my name in the transfer portal, and then that next year I went to uh, William Patterson University in uh, Jersey. Okay, and that's a D three, D three, D three school. So I went out there and junior year, my junior year in uh. At uh, William Patterson was all right, but my senior year is when I stepped up and you know really got to the bag and stuff. So. Okay, but, so yeah. tell me, as a point guard transitioning to the yeah. college level, what mm-hmm. were some of the challenges you had as a point guard and understanding the flow or the or the pace and uh, everything else? And just like you said, the pace it was mm-hmm. the pace for sure. Um, Cause I was always just like a go 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 player, you know what I mean? Like I never had that that gear to just switch from fast to slow or slow to fast, and I was always on fast, fast, fast. And uh, like I finally, like finally my senior year, I finally got to that point. I was like, you know what? Like I really got to work on my tempo and my pace, and just like how I control the game and stuff. Um, cause like there, that you know, we had scores, so they didn't really need me to score like that. So. But if I needed a bu- if I needed to get a buggy, I'd get a buggy. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly just run the offense and just having control of the of the pace, man. That was that was a big thing for me, is just controlling the pace, not being rushed, you know, taking my time, getting to my spots, and you know, just playing the game the right way, you know. Uh, do you think uh, coaching had a lot to do with that, like as far as understanding the game? Um, yeah, a lot of my trainers, a lot of my trainers, they you know they told me. Like you, you told me too. That, you know, just slow down, right? Slow down, take your time. And, Cause like once you once you get the concept of that, I feel like I I be telling the kids the same thing, same thing. Just slow it down, slow it down, and it will all make sense. You know? Right. That's what I. That's what that was a big challenge for me. But once I got that down, and I was still learning, you know. Mm-hmm. But once I got that down, I was I was able to you know control more of the game and more of the pace. Gotcha. Yeah. So then you went on to – did you go overseas right after school or did you – was it a waiting process? Was your agent saying, hey, man, give me a minute and I'll find it, or was it a quick transition? Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a waiting process. So I graduated 2018, and then my first year I went out there was 2019. So 
it was like a year year gap, you know. But uh, what you do? Not, what you? My, my fault to cut you off. What you do in between yeah. time? Because I know there's someone out there watching and they're waiting for that opportunity. What you would do in between yeah. time? I'm not gonna lie. That was a that was a struggle. You know, right. it was a stressful process, man. Because I was just like, man, I'm trying to go overseas. I wanna I wanna play pro. You know, that was my ultimate goal since I was a youngin. You know, mm -hmm. and uh. You know, like just that waiting process every day. Like, am I gonna get that call? Am I gonna get that email? Um, am I gonna get any type of news of like, you know, of getting my plane ticket or anything? You know, so. Um, but I was still working out. I was still working out. I just put my head down and just kept to working, man. That's all it was. But uh, that first or that first year after my college season, uh, I went to a camp in Turkey. In Istanbul, Turkey, wow. and it went good. Like I was killing, but nothing came out of it. So like mm. a lot of those camps be, you know, be up and ups and downs because they already know what they're looking for, you know. So, but I had a good, I had a good showing, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, they're not gonna pick this five ten, five eleven guard that came from the D three, you know. So there's a mm. lot of politics, but at the same time, you just gotta keep working. And, have that confidence and that mentality that everything's going to be good and you know, just got to keep working. That's it. So tell me about those camps, right? Um, when you yeah. you say you don't make the team from the camp, are they like, mm -hmm. you got to go home or is it enough? Or do you stay out there for a little bit? Uh, try to showcase your skills again. Let people know what that process looks like. Uh, I mean, it's up to you at that point. Because I mean, if they didn't pick you, they didn't pick you, but, you want to stay there and you want to just keep working out, you can keep working out. But, I mean, I feel like it's better just to go home, you know, regroup yourself, mm -hmm. get back to the drawing boards and just go from there. But, uh, like, it's an everyday process. You know, you got to contact agents, you got to contact teams, contact owners, GMs. Um, I remember that, that, that summer was – that was hectic summer because I was just on the computer. If I wasn't in the gym, I was in the computer just emailing, right. like messaging, messaging teams on Facebook or, you know, just little stuff, man, just trying to stay active on it, productive on it. So you was kind of playing as your own agent at some point? Pretty much because, I mean, I got I got messed over. Uh, I got played over from a, from an agent, man. He, uh, he told me that if I didn't get a deal – and he would return my money and all this stuff. He didn't do it, and I didn't hear from him back. So like, he mm. kind of scammed me. So that's that's one thing I gotta I gotta let you know these guys. Let, know. Yeah, like, let people know about me? the scams. Let let them know yeah, about the scams, gotta, brother. You gotta be careful with those, man, because there's a lot of scams, a lot of scamming going on in that industry, man. And it's a it's a dog ain't dog world, you know what I mean? So so how did he get um, you? So did he come in? He say, hey man, uh, you paid me X amount of dollars. Um, I yeah. represent you, and I have a thirty thousand team. Wants you right now. And yeah, we had all these teams, bro. All these teams listed in this computer, and he sent them to me. I was like, okay, this looks legit. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out, see what's up. And then like, like, he emailed them. He was like, keep me updated, but like, he wouldn't tell me like more details on like the teams and like what the what the league is looking for and just like all that stuff, you know. But uh, I did pay him up front. I paid him up front. I think it was like 250 euros or something like that. Uh -huh. And then uh, and then from there, I just it just didn't work out, you know. So did he um ever hit you back? Like were you reaching out to him, or it was just so we we was texting. Um, that's how I got to the camp in uh, in Turkey. Um, but after that, it was just. He didn't reply. He didn't reply to my messages. Mm -hmm. I would ask him like for the refund back because in the contract it said if you didn't get a a deal by this by X amount of days or X amount of time, then you get a refund back from you know what you paid. And I never got that back, so I was like, you know what? Yeah, I got to stop trusting these agents. And, yeah. You know. But the most important thing to to look for in an agent is like the FIBA certified. You know. FIBA they certified. That. Yeah, that FIBA certification. Okay. Man, they gotta have that little, that little. It's like a little member ID or something. A little number. Yeah, and, you're right. And, yeah, and then go from there, man. But overall, just that that whole agent stuff, like, it's tough. It's gotcha. Tough. If you had to do it all over again, you you're looking for an agent. You you yeah. you haven't been overseas. How what would be the steps yeah. you, you take? Oh, man. 
Um, but like, thank God, I got my dual citizenship. So mm -hmm. I I say first look into your background, like see if you got any like any connections to a country that your that your ancestors are from or anything, you know, like that. Mm. First, do your research and then go from there. Wow. Because that dual citizen that dual citizenship does help a lot because you're not counted as an import at that point. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um that's a big plus. Uh shout out to my guy Aries. Uh he he kind of put me on to that. Uh because I was uh I wanted to go to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I had a guy, I had a connection out there. He was like, hey, don't do it. Like the PBA, that's a lot of politics out there. If they're looking for imports, it's mostly like ex NBA players or like I top profile players, you know. Right. And it's like okay, like you know, let me see if I can get my dual citizenship from uh, Nicaragua, and uh, my dad helped me out a lot on that. So it was a process. Though. That was like, if you want to do that, you got to get on that like ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Like start on the positive ASAP. Gosh. Sure. And then, so a year later, you're overseas for the first time. What country yeah. was your first? First stop, Nicaragua. Nicaragua, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. I was out there in uh, LSB um, 2019. Gotcha. How, how was that transition Was it from college? Was it uh, hard to adapt? Was it a lot of plays? Um, what do they expect out of a 5'11", six-foot guard? Uh, they expect you to, to, to play both ways. You know, you got to play both ways. Be a good two-way player. Um, and just be in control of the game. Be in control of your team and uh, especially like the coach I had he was very old school mm -hmm. so he was like he was just always on me about taking shots and doing this but like I, I shot a good percentage uh that year uh, I think I finished with 40 45 from three 44 45 from three so Not like I had to percentage at all yeah I shot I shot it good but like still he would be like on my case about it about like shooting so much, but um, overall, just going from that transition was, was was big. It was tough man, because um, like players are tougher, they're bigger, and they're just older. You know, they mm. they have more experience. You know, and it's just a different play. Like from from college going into FIBA, like the rules and the regulations, everything is just different. You know. Gotcha. So learning to learning to adapt from that from college to Shafiba was just big. Gotcha. It was a big change though for sure. How how did you adapt? Was it more film? Did you work out more? Um did um, you get did you have a veteran on your team that you that helped you out a lot? Yeah, definitely. Uh I, I had a good I had good teammates, man. I had a good vet. Um mostly film though, a lot of film. Mm. A lot of film. I studied a lot of film that I knew. Um, just because at that point, it's like, okay, you're in season. You know, you can't burn yourself out. You still want to work out. You know, still want to get your lifts in and, you know, get your, you know, on court working. But it was just a lot of the, the film. Like, what could I have done better? Could I have split the screen? Or could I have, uh, you know, get a better angle on the screen? Or, you know, just, just little stuff, little details that, you know, make up for, you know, what you could have done better in right. that game or in that right. season in general. Nice. So, yeah. so now you're what, in year five? Year, going into year six, man. Year six. Year six. You're, you're, young you're, 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 you're a young vet. You're a young exactly. vet in year six. Yeah. What would you tell, as a young vet, what would you tell young Peter? going into a professional basketball? What would you tell them to help them out? Trust the process, man. Trust the, Trust process. the process. I love it. Trust the process. You know? I mean, I just keep it. it simple. I know it sounds cliche and everything, but no, nah, just literally just trust the process because um, like that saying is like, you don't know what, what your life is going to look like 10 years from now. You know what right. I mean? You just got to keep, got to keep working, staying at it um, and just taking care of, the, take care of your body, you know? That's mm -hmm. a big thing. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, because I have I have problems with my ankle right now, so I've right. been trying to I've been trying to get that right. Um, uh, just staying healthy, mm -hmm. stretching, mm -hmm. um, watching film, mm -hmm. uh, and just the little stuff, man. Just you know, staying on top of your work, staying on top of you know, just being responsible. 
in that gotcha. aspect. You know, just trusting in your craft, trusting your work. Gotcha. And don't worry about all the outside news that's what's going on and you know if they're gonna pick you up or if you're gonna be a, a, a top point guard in the league. Like those mm-hmm. are all little things I was worrying about going into my profession my first year as a professional is like all these things running in my head when I should have just had a clear mind and just you know, stay in the moment, stay in the present. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. So another thing I wanna know about. Um, yeah, yeah. Another thing I want to know about your experience overseas. Yeah. What was the hardest thing? I want to say hardest thing. What's the difference between American players and the players overseas? Overseas. Man, it's a big difference. Uh, I feel like Americans, like, they're just athletic. athletic. I mean, don't get me wrong. They, they, they got some IQ. They know how to play the game, of course, but I feel like once you, you know, go over over the waters in, in any country in general, they just they have that IQ. They have that mm-hmm. of know how it because they're not they're not really athletic, so they have to rely on their on their ability to to know the ins and outs of the game. Right. You know? um, and they could definitely shoot the ball better. I'll tell you that for sure. They 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 got they got a clip. They got a clip in that hand for sure. <laughs> uh I mean like I played a with a lot of Puerto Ricans and against a lot of Puerto Ricans and like Cubans, Dominicans, and, mm-hmm. and you know they just they have that IQ. You know? right. I can just tell, like they know they study the game, they they watch film, and, um, they just they got that that little that little IQ in them for sure. Gotcha. For sure. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what yeah. I try to tell. I try to tell a lot of people that uh, not a lot of people, yeah. but parents, um, uh-huh. kids. The difference um, in the game is the footwork, yeah. the being able to shoot the ball. Being, if you can have those things early, you'll la- you'll you'll play a long time. You'll oh yeah, play a sure. Long time. And um, if you can shoot, you're gonna have a job guaranteed. If you can shoot, you're gonna have a job guaranteed. Man. That's that's a must. I mean, everybody, anybody can be a shooter now. You know. Right. And yeah. I always ask this: Is it that cut? Is it really that cutthroat overseas? Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it is. Have you yeah, ever been? You have, have, have you ever seen someone cut like on a drop of a dime? Have you ever experienced yeah. this? All Talk the time. About all the Talk time. about it. All the time. Uh, Give me a story. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so back to 2022, I was uh playing my last year on my own. This was the first team I played for. Um, uh, going into my rookie season, and uh, we were good. We had a good team. We started off uh. Like ten and one, we only lost one game, uh-huh. and then all of a sudden we got to that losing streak. I don't know what it was. We just, I mean, it happens. You know, you lose some, you win some. Right. You always have a good streak. You always have a bad streak. But we were on that bad streak. I think we dropped three in a row, hmm. and then uh, like the owner or the GM, he was like, "Hey, like, what do you think about such and such?" And I think they're good. I mean, I think, you know, I think we're just on the bad little streak right now. I think we'll get back on track. And he's like, well, I think I'm about to, you know, think about sending them home, all that, and bringing in this player. Oh, they was treating you like LeBron. They was treating you like LeBron James, huh? They was, they was coming nope. to you. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was going to say, because, like, I'm from out like, here, and then, like, you know, having that dual citizenship, and um, it, it does help. And like I, I talk Spanish good, like I'm uh, I'm fluent in it. So, like they always like bring their ideas to me, and I just give them my intake. And I'm like, but I don't like to be in that in that middle in that. I in feel, that conversation. I feel, yeah. you know what I mean. I don't like doing that. You know, like that's somebody's job that you're messing with. So, right. um, I never want to be that dude to be like, oh yeah, just send him home. And like, yeah, just get this guy. But uh, you know, at some point you gotta. It's your job too, so mm-hmm. you gotta look. You gotta you gotta win some games. You know that's all they want is just wins. And uh, so yeah, that was a that was a big thing. So we kept one of the imports, and then we got two new imports. And surprisingly, we did good. We went seven and zero with them, and then we got bounced out in the first round of the playoffs. Though, so that was in a a good look, but. Overall, it's cutthroat, man. If you don't yeah. produce, you're probably gonna get sent home. 
Yeah, I think that, I think it's important for kids to know that. Like, you got to yeah. understand that the higher you go, especially after high school, is a job. Yeah. Like, people's jobs run a lot. People uh, make a living off of this. Their family is involved. Um, they yeah. don't care about your feelings. They don't care about, hey, man, I averaged 30 points in high school. Yeah. They, they're trying to accomplish their goal. And you got to help yeah. them meet that goal. Yeah, no, it's a dog eat dog world, man. It's a mm -hmm. it's a nasty business, but at the end of the day, it's just business, you know. It's just business. It's just business. It's no hard feelings. It's no. It's always love there, but they got to do what's best for their team, you know. So Absolutely. I understand that part. Yeah. So yeah. On, on the show, we like to do like a game called "Who You Got." So I don't. Now yeah. you're younger than me, right? So yeah, what what era? Do you think you grew up in like the 2000 eras, right? 2000, yeah, I was born in 96, but yeah, 96. So you, you, yeah. you got 2000s, 2010s, yeah. 2020s. What yeah. era is the best out of, out of 2000s, 2010s, and 2020s? Now, LeBron, I feel like he's in all of them, he's in 2000s, oh, yeah. 2010s, but even Kobe. Kobe's in the 2000s, 2010s. And, oh, um, yeah. um, me personally, my argument is I'll say the early 2000s. I'll say the 2000s was the year everyone was at their peak from the Tracy McGrady's to the Allen oh, Iversons. Um, this one, the elite score, that's when the, 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 the game of basketball really started to change as far as like the point guard being the scorer. Right. That's right. Um, and that's, that's and that's my take on it. Like, let me know yeah. yours and, and your take on it. I ain't gonna lie, I probably have to agree with you on that one. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a early two thousand I always I was a big Kings fan. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the 04 days, 05, you know, when we had my so Dwayne Wade. Huh? Oh, you, you said Heat's fan? No, Kings fan. Kings fan. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You from the Bay. You from the what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so oh, we had like Mike Bibby. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. We had Mike Bibby, Steph Christie, you know, okay. Brad Miller, all them. I was like, yeah, this, this is the era, man. Because it was like, bro, we were so good, but we could never get past that point. Y'all couldn't you know get past mean? the Lakers. Kobe. Y'all couldn't. Yeah, yeah Kobe. <laughs> so Lakers, it was killing y'all. Yeah, and it was just like, yeah, nah. And we had a nice team, bro. And we had people coming off the bench like Bobby Jackson and, you know, just – just little like key pieces, and we just can never get over that hump. But no, nah, I definitely agree with you on that. Early two thousands for sure. Man. So you're about five. You're about five eleven, six foot. Yeah, who five is, eleven. So I'm a good day. Who is nah. the best five eleven guard of all time? That's no, we want to say six. Let's say six ball. foot and under. So let's say the best guard six foot and under of all time. Six foot and under, man. Honestly, man, I'm a big Isaiah Thomas fan. Isaiah, how do you I listen? See. I see. Which which, which I which Isaiah Thomas y'all talking about? Uh, no, nah, the one the one that was on the Celtics. The Celtics. All right, cool. Because listen, yeah. bro, there's nothing that come on, man. Listen, it's nothing that bothers me more when like young people say like older people who was like best point guards. Like nah, I'm yeah. I'm older than you. Isaiah Thomas mm -hmm. who played for the bad boy Detroit Pistons could not be my favorite point guard because. He nah, played in the nah, 80s nah. when I was born. So, but yeah, Isaiah yeah, Thomas, right. okay. Tell me, tell me what you yeah, like about Isaiah Thomas. Oh, he was a straight killer, man. Yeah. He was a killer. He was yeah, averaging, man. what, that year, uh, that MVP, or that MVP race year, he was averaging, what, like 32, 33? It's, it's sad to see how he went out, man. Yeah, that's that was, like, that was heartbreaking because, like, he was my favorite player. Like, just watching him, I was going on YouTube, watching highlights, and then him just, like, not falling off, but like the way the Celtics did him and like his injury and all that stuff, like uh -huh. it led to his you know, downfall, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. That was a tough one. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. This is the last last question, man. You did yes, sir. You went to yes, college. Sir. After me, you was yeah. training, you went on to college, you went on yeah. to play professional. But before yeah. you left, man, you never could beat me one on one. You still think you, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you think you can get me? I knew you were gonna bring that up. I had to. I had to. I had. I had a couple under my belt though. I probably got like two or three. 
But I we like used to, I give you that, but we used to play series though, because I know my body. My yeah. body don't warm up to like the second yeah, game. Yeah, that's facts. So, that's facts. Like, no, bro. Like, yo, nah. used to give me, I ain't gonna lie, you used to give me that work, bro. We, <laughs> we, we, we like we work out first, and then you would just like bust my ass. I'm like, damn, bro. Yeah. But like honestly, well, that made me a better player though, because like I would go home, bro. I, I swear to God, I shit you not. I would go home mad as hell. <laughs> how, do I, how do I lose three in a row? Or like, how do I not get one win? And like, I'll be so close, but then you're just like, there you go. That was my shit. That was yeah, my shit, man. That's that veteran yeah. shit. Yeah, come at the end and just take it over. Like, you would, like, have me in my mind. Like, okay, I got this guy to be. I'm up, like, 8-5. And then all of a sudden, you just score five straight. And I'm like, damn, man. No, that's the veteran you in me, man. Yeah, yeah. No, but but I, now that, you, that, that, really, that really showed me, like, a lot, though. I was just like, I'll go home. I'll be like, I got to get better. Yeah. I got to get better. And I feel like I, 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 like, I like to tell kids, like, Play, play more. Like, of mm -hmm. course, train, you know, work on your skills, like, do mm -hmm. what you got to do. Um, But play. That's how you get better is, like, playing against guys that are better than you, playing against, you know, top competition. Right. And then that's going to, you know, bring out the dog in you, and like, you know, in, in one way. So um, just playing guys that are better than you, especially, like, guys that are older, right. but then they can put you on game. Like, you put me on a lot of games, bro. So I, I appreciate you, too. All love, bro. That's what I was there for. Yeah, yeah I don't oh, think yeah. kids do that anymore. Like kids don't really play against nah. people older, older than them. Like I, yeah. I, I believe I'm about about seven, eight years older than you. So it's like, you know, I already had yeah. grown man strength. Um, yeah. I, I played in college already. I graduated college. Um, yeah. You know, at that time I was a tr I was training a lot too. So I had yeah. I had the IQ. I I knew what you mm -hmm. was gonna do. I knew what to look for. I understood pace. And then I was like telling you, yo, bro, you can be doing this. You should be doing it like this. And yeah, I, you know, exactly. I'm glad. Uh -huh. and, you, and one thing about it too that I that I enjoy with training, when I mean training with you, was you were coachable. You know, like yeah. like you saying, like you was probably upset, but I didn't know you was upset walking home. Like I didn't know yeah. any of those things. Like because you was willing to be, you was willing to be coached. And I think a lot of kids yeah. miss that too. I think they get too emotional about losing and not understanding just a moment in time when you need to learn. So yeah, so you did a good yeah. job with that. And in return, bro, you're a professional basketball player like you always wanted. You still yeah. you're still active right now. Um, you know, hope, yeah. hope everything go well with your ankle. Um, yeah, appreciate and it. And we want to see you back on the court. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. It yes, was, sir. Uh, it's been a pleasure being on on your podcast and yeah, you know, man. everything, man. Appreciate you though, man. All love, bro. Um Let's make sure we, I mean, we always stay connected, always, you know, say yeah. something, say something in your comments right. or whatever. Um, you got yeah. my number, I got yours. Like, yeah. man, much respect to you, much respect to your journey. Keep going. You know, let's keep in touch, bro. Likewise, brother. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that's another show for Score Society. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, comment. And until next time.